As we approach the last month of the year, it's time for our final market update. Today, I'm gonna to discuss how to work around the high interest rates and utilizing somebody else's funds, no money out of your pocket, as well as what to expect overall as a buyer or seller in the last month of the year. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Erica Monroe, I'm a realtor in the Bay Area and I specialize in Solano County. Housing affordability, as you know, is at an all-time low. Only 15% of Californian households can currently afford to purchase the median price house, which is 843,000. Luckily in Solano County, a majority of our houses are priced below that figure, but that's still pretty eye-opening. Not only are interest rates high, but home values continue to increase. Now on paper, we very much reflect a seller's market, and that's due to lack of inventory, as we've discussed all year, supply and demand. We have about two months worth of housing inventory. A more neutral market or leaning towards a buyer's market is gonna be six months supply. However, it's important to understand these stats because they're not that transparent. Now more than ever, buyers have incredible incentives and ability to ask for concessions, especially in the new construction sector. And that is not reflected in a majority of the stats that are offered. For example, it's very common, especially for homes that are closing this year, for builders to offer to buy down the interest rate on behalf of the buyer. So it's common to see something called a 2-1 buy down. That means the builder uses its own funds to buy down your interest rate by 2% the first year you have your mortgage, and then by 1% the second year you have your mortgage. You would resume your normal rate for the third year, but the thought is during that time, hopefully interest rates will come down and you'll have the opportunity to refinance. So to give you a real example, today's rate is about 7.5%. If you were to receive a 2-1 buy down, your first year's mortgage would be based on a 5.5% interest rate, the second year based on 6.5 interest rate, and the third year you'd resume that 7.5 interest rate unless rates have come down and you had the opportunity to refinance. Some builders are also offering permanent buy downs, so a fixed 30 year rate. I've had buyers lock in a 5.99% interest rate and I've seen as low as 5.875. You're Yes, you're still having to pay the higher price points that we're seeing today. And keep in mind, builders are very protective of home value. So you're not gonna see huge decreases or price reductions. They are going to try to incentivize you on the back end through those rate buy downs. Some are also offering closing cost credits on top of that. In my opinion, receiving that rate buy down and closing cost credit is gonna save you money more immediately than if you were just to try to reduce the price point. Your monthly payment with a reduction in rate is likely gonna be a couple hundred dollars in savings that you'll feel right away. A reduction in price point by 10 to 20,000 is not gonna save you much monthly, possibly a hundred dollars or so. I wouldn't worry about savings over the course of the 30 year loan. You're more than likely going to refinance within the next five years or so. Make sure you have a realtor that goes with you on your first visit and helps you negotiate the best possible deal, especially if we have existing relationships with the office folks. They're more likely to work with you to get the best possible deal because they know you're in good hands and we are gonna work to help you close on time. For resale homes, we are still seeing some buyer concessions, not nearly as aggressive as new construction. Understandably, we're dealing with real people's money versus a corporation's money. But sellers are still having to offer concessions, especially if they are on market for longer than the county average, which is currently 35 days for Solano County. So buyers looking at resale homes, if the house has been on market for less than 35 days, you're not gonna have the ability to go in too aggressively unless the seller happens to be incredibly motivated. And if you see a turnkey house that's really spectacular in a great location, you can still anticipate that multiple buyers are gonna be looking at the house and there could be some competition. I have some buyers closing on a resale home this week and they did have to pay the list price. However, they felt that the value was there. It has an incredible view, beautiful finishes, the house has been really well maintained, and the appraisal confirmed that the value is in fact there. 
The seller also had so much interest that during the contract, he had to remove the for sale sign early because so many buyers were inquiring. So there's still demand, there's still a lot of activity. For a spectacular house, it won't be uncommon to have to offer list price or close to list price. We were, however, able to negotiate some repairs and closing cost credit during the contract. The lower inventory is likely gonna help sellers still command a great price point. But again, keep in mind, interest rates impact everyone. They're a challenge for sellers as well. So it's important to approach this market very reasonably. You're likely going to have to give some credit for repairs. You're likely gonna to have to invest some money up front into showcasing your house because it takes a lot of work to get a buyer in the doors who can afford today's prices. So how do you determine whether now is the right time for you to buy? Well, ultimately it depends on your goals. Historically, we've seen that buying a house sooner rather than later is gonna allow you time to build equity because the trajectory is that home values continue to rise over time. I saw a really interesting statistic the other day that pre-pandemic, a homeowner's net worth was around 255,000 versus a renter's net worth, which was about 6,300. And the difference being a homeowner is not only gaining equity over time, they're also paying towards principal, right? Part of their monthly payment is going towards principal or equity in their property. So they have more than one source of gaining value. Unfortunately, with rent, that money doesn't go towards an asset, it goes towards your landlord's asset and helps you build their wealth. Post pandemic, it's said that homeowners have a net worth around 396,000 versus renters that are hovering right around 10,000. That's a 40 times greater net worth as a homeowner. Of course, that's due to the unicorn years, the incredible home value appreciation that we saw. That's not gonna be typical moving forward, but just goes to show that you're likely gonna be able to gain your net worth significantly faster because you have multiple sources helping you to appreciate your home value. My goal as a realtor and for this channel is to offer great value and insight into our hyper-local market. I'm always happy to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help.